Hey, what's up? Jason here from Unity3D.College. Today I'm going to talk about colliders and triggers. I want to go over the differences between the two, when I would use one versus the other, and how you can set them up. So if you've never used a collider before, you're just new to Unity, a collider is what the system uses to determine physics interactions. So you can stop things, bounce off of other objects, fall, um, and you also get code callbacks for these things. A trigger, on the other hand, doesn't do the physics interaction itself, instead just gives you back the callback. Now, let me give you a real quick example of a, a physics interaction happening. So I have here a cube that is floating, or placed just slightly above this other cube, and it has a rigid body and a box collider on it. If I turn off the mesh renderer, you can see the box collider there. It's just this green outline. Now if I press play, I'm going to turn the renderer off for this, I press play and the box is going to fall down and we get a little red sphere everywhere that the box collided with our other cube down here. So this, this one contact cube fell, it hit at these three points and then it hit at those two points. Now let me show you the code that's generating these spheres and how that works real quick. So if we jump over to here, you'll see we have the on collision enter method. This is called whenever an object um, collides with another object and they both have a collider on them and one of them has a rigid body on it. They could both have a rigid body but at least one of them is going to need this rigid body. So what you get back here is a collision. So when you get a collision, a non-collision enter message, you'll have a collision. That collision has information about how the collision actually happened. And you can see here I have a commented outline. This is what I almost always use because usually when I have a collision, I only care about a single point. It's rare that I care about multiple points of collision. But for this example, I wanted to show you that the collision.contacts is actually an array of all of the contacts where the things meet. That's why when this falls down, let's watch it one more time. This time in slow motion, I'll pause, press play, and then we'll just step through a couple frames. And you'll see that when this hits, let's see right there, it's actually low enough in that this face right here is hitting, this piece right here is hitting there, and that piece right there, it's hitting, yeah, right here where this third sphere is. And then as it falls down, you'll see that the um, the edge right there is going to touch, and then we'll get two more spheres. Like I said, this is mainly just for visualization, so we can see exactly what's happening and how this event works and kind of get an idea of what we can use it for. Again, most of the time, I really only care about the first point. You know, a lot of the time this is, I shoot a projectile at something, I want to know where to put the explosion or where to put the impact particle or something like that, and I care about that first point. So I'll almost always do collision.contacts zero, get the first one and get the point, and that gives us just the world position of the con of the collision. We can also get things like the normal of the collision, so we know which um, which direction the face is facing that we hit. And um, I think there's a little bit of extra data there, but main thing that you'll care about is the point here. Now, if we switch to a trigger though, so say I have my cube here and I check the is trigger box, now when I press play, I'm not gonna get that collision message. Let's just press play and watch what happens. So you saw they both flashed yellow and this went right through. That's because, again, a trigger doesn't deal with the actual physics interaction. It doesn't cause the objects to bounce off each other, fall off each other, or stop each other. They don't really interact. They just send these messages back to the scripts so that we can use them. So if I look again at my script, you'll see here I have an on trigger enter method. And notice that this doesn't take a collision or doesn't pass in a collision. It passes in a collider, which is the other object that collided with this, that entered its trigger. And here I'm just calling a coroutine to flash it yellow for a tenth of a second. That's all this is. But the important part here is that you don't have a point. You don't have a contacts. You don't have the normal. You just have the fact that this object entered another object. Now, most of the time, that is more than sufficient for things that you use triggers for. A lot of the things that... I would use triggers for, well let me just go over a quick list of things that I've used triggers for in the past. So area interactions, maybe you your player moves, 
they enter some area and I have a big sphere collider there or a box collider there. And once the player has entered that, I call the on trigger enter method fires and it starts off some stuff for the area. Maybe it spawns some bad guys, makes some rocks fall, some audio plays like, hey, you've entered this, this cool area. It could be as simple as you enter this area, this little trigger, and music starts playing. But it could also be something simple like um, a power-up or a coin, something where your player is going to jump up, touch this thing. You want that thing to maybe interact, do something, like maybe it disappears, it poofs, it plays some audio, adds some points. But you don't want that object to cause any physics interactions with the player. You don't want them to hit the coin and then the coin goes flying. You don't want them to hit the coin and they stop. You just want that coin to send back a code event that you can do some work with and then maybe disable the coin, maybe leave it enabled, maybe it's something they can jump in multiple times. Whatever it is, it's something that you don't want to physically move other objects. Now there are cases where I'll use a collision and it's somewhat iffy if I should be using a trigger or a collision, um, but there are reasons why I go for the collision. For instance, a missile, right? I'm shooting a missile at a spaceship, an enemy spaceship, and I don't usually want to use an on trigger enter method there, or I, I don't want the spaceship to have triggers, I want it to have a collider, because I want to know exactly where that missile hit the spaceship, right? I want to know like, hey, I hit it right here on this part, because that's where I'm going to play my explosion particle. And that, that may also be like, I'm going to damage the system that is nearest to that collision point. You know, maybe I've mapped out systems on my spaceship, like these are the engines. If I hit closest to the engines, I damage the engines. And for that, again, a trigger intro won't work. I could do it with multiple triggers, but a lot of time I'll just have a collider and then just play it there. And again, even with multiple triggers, I wouldn't know exactly where to put the, um, the particle system. So what are the restrictions and the differences here? Uh, the, well, I guess, let me just jump over to something really important. You wanna make sure that if you're moving an object that has a collider on it, a trigger or a, just a non-trigger collider, you wanna have a rigid body on it. You don't want to move, enable, or disable game objects that have no rigid body but have a collider. You can do it, it will technically work, but you get a performance hit because the objects that have a collider and don't have a rigid body, phys or the Unity physics system does some work under the hood to optimize those and it expects them not to move. So as soon as you move them, it has to redo that optimization, which is a big hit and at least according to the documentation, it can cause other weird bugs where maybe your collision just doesn't work right. So the general rule there is just, if your game object is going to move with the collider on it, make sure that it has a rigid body. Now if your object's not moving at all, say it's a static object like this box, but I want to enable and disable this box at runtime. What I want to do instead, I, I still need a rigid body there, but I don't want it to move. I don't want it to use gravity or anything. So I just check the is kinematic box. This will prevent the, the object from being moved or pushed around or rotated by other objects. The physics system won't really move it. You have to move it yourself, but it still gives that um, that nice physics system interaction with everything else. So let's take a look at that. If I hit play now, my four contact cube should still just fall right down, but I can now enable and disable this. Oh, I have this set as a trigger. So I could disable and enable this object without getting that hit though. So there we go. Falls down, rolls away. Now I also have set up a cylinder here, so let's take a quick look at this. The cylinder is just set to move forward, it's just a simple script that moves the position. We have a kinematic rigid body because I want this object to be completely controlled by the scripts. I don't want other things pushing this and moving it around. Let's just press play and um, watch what happens. So here we go, it just walked right through my kinematic rigid body. Now. The reason for that is that both of these are kinematic, so neither one of them can push or move each other. We'll still get events if I had checked the is trigger box. Actually, I think we may have. Did we not see that? Let's see. So when it goes through, we can get the trigger event. Um, but if I wanted this thing to move, which like I said before, I didn't, but say I've changed my mind and this thing should move, I can uncheck is kinematic, and now this cylinder should be able to just push that box right out of the way. 
Oh, you also see that each one, as soon as I turn this to uh, not be kinematic, all of these spheres that I'm creating, because I'm using the create primitive, they all have colliders on them, and all of those colliders are pushing this thing right out of the way. So, not the best example, but I hope you get the idea that kinematic or rigid bodies can't move. Well, they can't move from the physics system. You have to move them yourself. And the non-kinematic ones, you know, they'll move, fall over, and roll. Um, let me actually here. Let's just disable the script on the cube. Where is it? It's this one right here. I'll just remove this component. Now those spheres won't show up and we can actually see the thing push. So there we go. So now you see it just kind of pushes it right along. And again, this thing isn't pushed because it's set to is kinematic. So otherwise we would get some weird behavior there where they'd both be pushing against each other. Um, actually, let's try it out. All right, so we hit uncheck is kinematic. And there we go. Now you can see they kind of push against each other. This guy rolls away. Now, one last thing that's not really triggers or colliders related, but somewhat interesting I think is right here this constraints area it's hidden and a lot of people I've noticed don't realize it's here if you expand it out you can actually freeze things like the rotation so say I want to freeze rotation on this thing so it can't spin which will mean it can't tip over but it's still gonna push it's still gonna fight back it just never tip over all right so that's somewhat useful it's also sometimes useful to freeze positions a lot of the time when I freeze position it's something like freezing the Y position so that something doesn't go up and down that I don't expect to move up and down. Maybe I expect it to bounce off, you know, side to side, but I want to make sure that if I hit it at the wrong angle, it doesn't bounce and go downward. So I've used that a lot on like a top down style game it's where I want everything to move along a plane, but we're still doing physics interactions. So it just freeze the Y position so that that can't be adjusted in the physics collisions. So. And I hope this is somewhat helpful. There's a pretty nice documentation on the Unity site. I'll link that in the description below too if you're interested in colliders and triggers and kind of want to know a little bit more. You definitely check that out. And if you have questions, feel free to just drop them in the comments below or join me at the site at unity3d.college. Send out emails every day with little tips like this, other interesting developer stories. And again, if you like the video, don't forget to like and hit subscribe. Thanks. For